We are the Screen Team. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I am Chris, and I'm being joined by our good friend, Brad. Brad, um, first time on the show here in 2018. How have things been so far in the new year for you? They've been good. They've been good. Uh, I, uh, my daughters are growing up, getting big. And, yeah. yeah. You got twin daughters, right? I do. They're two years old now. How did how did Christmas work for you guys? All right? Uh, they're still not quite sure what to think of Santa Claus and all of his evil doings, <laughs> I guess, but, uh, which is good. That means it saves us money right now. That's but, right. Uh, you know they're really growing they're getting tall and i think they're really gonna next christmas it'll be a little bit more meaningful for them that's exciting man now uh i think before the christmas break you got in touch with me and you're like man i, I want to do a movie i want to do the screen team again and then you're like i want to do taxi driver right i know it's very <laughs> odd. you don't see too many people our age watching movies like this yeah yeah taxi driver is a classic it's uh one of the greatest films of all time uh but it's also a film that when you watch it you you have weird feelings after it i, I don't know how to explain the first time I ever watched it i was like what did i just watch why is this movie great well it's sorsacean it's sorsacean so yeah. naturally it's going to have uh, a different feel to it than a conventional movie you might expect sure um and this is sort of out of the element that you would expect robert de niro to be in i mean you usually think of him as being kind of a mafia guy or something like that and this yeah. is uh he's a ex-vietnam vet he's moved back to the united states on honorable discharge and he's frankly trying to make himself uh make it on his own and he's depressed and he's not able to sleep so he takes a job as a taxi driver and he just is inundated with the filth of the city and i think yeah. that's why they made the movie that way yeah and he volunteers for that shift right he wants that he wants it he can't sleep anyway yeah um and the whole movie and i actually read up on this the whole movie was designed to be sort of um sort of like a daydream state it was mm -hmm. designed to make the audience member actually feel like they were insomniac too or in sort of a a druggy state, which I've, you know, I've never used drugs, but I would yeah. imagine it's what it would feel like. So let me ask you, when you were watching this film, did, did you feel that way watching it? I felt sleepy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that sounds bad, but I actually felt sleepy. I felt the sort of the malaise that I think De Niro was trying to project the, sure. the, the lethargy, the, the not the addled thinking, which kind of leads him down the path that he goes down. I mean, I, I can't identify with his way of thinking, but I can definitely see how that character got that way. Yeah. So De Niro, he's De Niro's the man. I mean, it's, how how did you think about his performance? Were were you is, is this one of the all time great performances? I would say it is. I mean, it's not his conventional type of role, and, mm -hmm. and of course, things like Meet the Parents, which I think he's hilarious <laughs> in. It's not his conventional role either. But exactly, but the whole <laughs> that whole intimidating father in law thing yeah. kind of goes along with his mafia persona. Sure, sure, sure. But this one, he plays um, sort of a. I think he's sort of a confused guy that's mm -hmm. come out of Vietnam. He's probably has some PTSD and you kind yeah. of feel for the character and his mental state. And he's, he's a loner and he's trying to kind of, I think he's really reaching out to somebody when he reaches out to Betsy, who's played by Sybil Shepard. He's sure. wanting that companionship, but I think the rejection by her plus all the filth that he's seeing in New York city, I think that really turns him off to society in general. And it leads him down the path that, that he, he goes takes. on. Mm -hmm. Now he sees all this filth it disgusts him. He wants to do something about it. He wants to somewhat make a difference. There's a right. few scenes with a politician and you know, he, he kind of, you know, wants to maybe help him, but then later on in the film, he doesn't. And there's scenes with a very young Jodie Foster. Right. Jodie uh, Foster was 12 whenever they made this movie. Yeah. Actually, it's because of the grave nature of the film and the adult themes. Um, she actually had to be accompanied by guardians, things like her mother. And, of course. Um, I think some other friends of the family that actually were on set and she had to be counseled about, you know, the scenes that they were portraying in the movie. Sure. Um, I mean, I need to be counseled after watching <laughs> know, those scenes, know. you know? It's a, it's, it's a movie that um, I, I think you kind of have to have sort of a little bit of a of a bent toward the psychological thriller type to really mm -hmm. appreciate this movie. And, you know, a lot of people like action, like Die Hard, but that's not really a psychological thriller. Sure. Then you have thrillers that are scary movies, you know, like Friday the 13th and things like that. And then you have this, which is, um, I really don't know. It's sort of got a historical significance to it, too. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, based off of the way New York City was back in 1976, it kind of shows that trashy side of the i mean i mean and i think scorsese does a great job you almost like i mean you can see it but uh, like it almost you can almost like smell the way <laughs> yeah. new york city was and it, you just feel kind of you feel dirty you know you do. and that's exactly <laughs> the image he was trying to do trying to project with this film sure. and uh, some of the techniques he used to get that across where the lighting he would actually film the cab scenes where you know 
Robert De Niro was driving his cab, mm-hmm. they would film it with very minimal lighting, lying down in the back seat of the cab. Yeah. So they would get all the little sounds like the squeaks of the springs and stuff to just make it feel like you're truly in a cab. Yeah. Now there's um there's violence in this movie and you know, back in the day when this movie came out, um this was considered very risque as far as the violence. It was mm-hmm. gruesome, you know. We're kind of desensitized now. We see a lot right. of does does the and this is kind of a weird question to say, so I apologize. Does the violence hold up? Is it does it still does it still surprise you watching it all these years later? You know it does. I actually heard that on this movie they um, had a difficult time getting it rated down to an R. Like, mm-hmm. Apparently the violence was so grotesque and gratuitous. Um, but there's only like one scene that has that. You know what I mean? I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's the combination of the violence and the blood, but it also it's a combination of that with uh, the mindset of the actor, the, sure. the, the character himself. What's his issue? It's sort of I think it hits close to home with um you know even at that time we had the loners who would go nuts and yeah. have their political stances that they would fight for and we obviously that's a thing now that people yeah you know, it's, people have on their minds but even then that was a thing and i think that was really what really touched people and what made them think that it needed to be brought down a notch and so they i think they went in and discolored some of the the bloody scenes and made it look less realistic to sure. make it bring it down to an r so for me anyway this is a movie that's I'm okay watching every 10 years or so. How about you? How, how do you feel about Taxi Driver? You know, actually, I could watch it again tonight. <laughs> you know, actually, I did. I liked it. Um, like I said, I, I like how Scorsese just captures that feeling. You feel like you can identify with the, um, not the mental state, but I guess the mood of the movie. You, mm-hmm. can, you really feel like you're in the sewers of New York and the underbelly. You're seeing all the filth and the, the sleaze that goes down. You feel like you're there. You yeah. feel damp. And, and dank like you do in the, in the movie shows. You really do. Movie's called Taxi Driver. Scorsese directed. Uh, uh, Robert De Niro's in it. Uh, Harvey Keitel is in it. Simple Shepard, like you said. Um, great cast, great movie. And uh, it's definitely uh, one of those classics you got to check out if you haven't done so already. Brad, dude, thank you again for the knowledge and, and everything, man. Well, Appreciate you. you coming on the show. We got more requests and more of uh, movie reviews coming your way right here on the screen team.